Trevor here with Life Based Solutions for Fitness Friday. Super excited to be with you here with you again today. Um, we're going to dive right into things, not make this a super long, uh, super long video for you. But we're going to do some fun stuff today. We're going to build a couple workouts. Um, then, if you guys have questions or you'd like me to do some very specific things with some movements or things that you that you like or things you want to do, see if I can help out. And uh, maybe we'll come back next week and help build a few more of these things. This is the part that I enjoy a lot, getting to actually construct workouts, program things. Um, this is my passion. It's a lot of fun. So for those of you that are brand new to Fitness Friday, I'm Trevor Brown with Life-Based Solutions. Life-Based Solutions is a nutrition software company and platform um, that's used in my own gym, in my own business, and by gyms all over the country and businesses all over the country alike to scale and run good quality nutrition programs. Um, so that that is where a lot of you know me is from Life Base, but I've also been a CrossFit gym owner for the last 12 years. And so these Fridays when we get together, it's all about things fitness with maybe a little nutrition sprinkled in here and there. Um, if you guys want to get a hold of me, just reach out to Trevor at lifebasesolutions.com. Or of course, you can just go to lifebasesolutions.com and check out our website. So um, if going back to what we've worked on in, in the weeks previous, we set goals. We talked about how to scale back workouts and how to start with just moving in general, things like just walking or jogging if we haven't been active at all. Um, but I think we're at a point now where we can start to build some workouts um, give you guys ways to wrap your head around fitness and maybe a more fun way other than, you know, just jumping in a pool or on a bike or going out for a walk. So um, let's do that this morning. I'm going to share a screen. We're going to hope this works. Share a screen with you. And all right. And then we're just going to construct a workout together here. So if you guys want to drop comments, by the way, you're more than welcome to do that. I'll get to answer those. But we're going to start by talking about a very simple workout. We're going to call this a triplet. So a triplet just means there are three movements involved, right? And we're going to talk through how we can meet any level of fitness from the very beginner that's never really done anything before, all the way up to the most advanced athlete that's been working out for years, right? And those movements that we're going to work with are squats, push-ups, and running right now don't go away from me if you don't like to run trust me we're going to make this so that anybody can do it so we've got a couple ways that we can design workouts and this is some of the thought process that goes through my head when programming workouts for our gym we have classes of you know five to ten people all the way up to classes of sometimes 30 people or more and fitness levels in all of those classes range from brand new people that have been a member at our gym for a week or two um, who maybe haven't worked out in 20 or 30 years all the way up to college athletes and advanced athletes, people competitive in CrossFit. So how in the world do we get, you know, the 18 year old college athlete to be able to work out right next to the 60 or 70 year old uh, man or woman right next to our coaches and everybody has a great time to get an awesome workout and everybody gets the same stimulus or feel for the workout. Well, I'm going to lend a little insight as to how we program and where that thought process is. So that's one, one theme that I want you to keep in mind is the stimulus or the feel for a workout. And by the way, I'll include these notes in the comments and even include a link to this Google Drive doc if you guys um, want to check it out and download it after our call here. So keeping the right stimulus in mind, we're going to work with squats, push-ups, and running. We've got a couple ways that we can prioritize workouts. We can either do them for task or for time. Now, a task priority workout means you've got a certain amount of work that we have to get done, and we really don't care how long it takes. Now, that being said, remember, we always want to get the right feel for the workout. So I don't want a workout to take me 10 minutes and then it take a brand new member at my gym 30 minutes. Either I didn't scale it back enough for them to get the right stimulus somewhere in that 10 to 15 minute window, or I made it way too easy on myself and I should have made it more difficult. So it took me closer to that 25 or 30 minute range, right? But task workouts mean we are prioritizing the work and we're going to get that done with whatever time frame you know is allotted there or however long it takes time priority workouts I mean we're going to set the time so let's say we're going to work for 20 minutes okay and we're going to do as much work inside of that 20 minutes as we can but we know that no matter what i'm working for 20 minutes you're working for 20 minutes um a brain member at our gym's working for 20 minutes and a top level elite athlete they're also working for 20 minutes so when you're new to stuff or when you're trying to figure out ways to do things at home 
I highly recommend doing them as time priority workouts. So that makes things just a little bit easier because you know how long you can do something. It's easier for us to get the same stimulus or feel. All right. So let's talk about how we can scale this workout back, organize it so that anybody can do it. All right. So first things first, what we need to do is we're going to start. We know that we're going to do a time priority workout. So let's just set that workout for 25 minutes. I want to clarify, this does not include any sort of warm up or stretching or getting sweaty. So we've dove into this before, but just make sure you're active, you're warmed up, your, your body temperature's up, you're moving your heart rates up a little bit, and we've stretched out before we start working out, right? So 25 minutes, and we're going to call this an AMRAP, okay? AMRAP means as many rounds, okay, or reps as possible. So inside of 25 minutes, we're going to do as much work as we can, all right? So let's establish first, I like to think through this, what are some different movements that we can do that would kind of meet all levels of fitness, okay? Well, we're gonna start with the squats, right? So let's start with the most advanced version of squats, and that would be doing a, a weighted squat in some sort of capacity. This could be with a barbell, this could be with a dumbbell or a kettlebell, um, could be wearing a weight vest. We're gonna do a weighted squat in some capacity. That's kind of the most elite version, right? I think it's always easier to start from my standpoint with the most elite version and work our way backwards. So, all right, weighted squats. And then we just might have air squats. Um, these are just done with your body weight, right? So we're not adding any external load. Your body becomes the load or the weight in which you're working with. Well, Trev, I'm brand new to this stuff. It hurts my knees. I haven't done squats. I don't know that I can get below parallel. What's another option? If you're brand new to this, we're going to do chair squats or bench squats. And so those of you can see me, I'm sitting in a chair, right? So I stand up. I'm just going to sit down in that chair and stand back up. So that's what I mean by chair squats. It's something that anybody can do. Um, if you can sit on your couch at home, if you can sit on the toilet, we can do chair squats or bench squats, right? So that's going to be our ultimate scaling version for people that are brand new to things. And I promise if you do enough of them, they're still going to make you sore in a really good way, right? Okay, well, let's talk about those push-ups. So now we've got push-ups that are going to be the top, the top version of those would be weighted, right? And so we could do like a bench press with a barbell or maybe dumbbells, right? So that gives you guys an idea of how we can make those um, kind of that top level version there. And then we can do push-ups. Now we can do a bunch of variations of these. We could do hand release push-ups. We could do a T push-ups or a variation of these, a new military standard. We do clapping push-ups, right? So we can always make push-ups even harder themselves, a bunch of versions of these, right? So push-ups down to the deficit. And then how do I scale that back even further? Well, now I'm going to do push-ups on my knees. So knee push-ups is a way to scale those back. And then what if I still can't quite get through a range of motion, right? I can't touch my chest to the ground on my knees. Well, now we can use a countertop, okay, or a wall and kind of stand at an incline and we can do push-ups on that countertop or wall, okay? So we can scale these back infinitely. And now we've got the running portion, all right? So how can we make running even more difficult? Well, we can put a weight vest on. There's a traditional workout, um, everybody does it across the world now. It's called Murph. This is done every Memorial Day weekend. If you guys haven't seen the movie Lone Survivor, check it out. That's um, Murphy is one of the people in the military in that movie. And that's who the workout is named after. But that workout is a mile run to buy in and buy out. So you end up running two miles and it's done in a weight vest. So, and there's push-ups, pull-ups, and squats in the middle there too. But that's the way we can make running even more challenging is adding a weight vest. Well, of course we can run or we can run faster to make it more challenging, right? We could do a brisk walk or if that's too much, right? We can ride like a stationary bike or a bicycle outside or an elliptical would be a great way to take pressure off of the knees and joints. Um, uh, there'd be some cool things along those lines that we can use. So gives you kind of an idea of some different options there of how we can scale back things. So we know what we're doing. We're doing squats, push-ups, and running. And we've got a few variations for kind of the, the top level advanced version, an intermediate level, and then a beginner version. Okay. 
So we're going to do this for 25 minutes. All right. So we know that we're working for 25 minutes. All right. Sorry about my screen here. 25 minute AMRAP as we said above. Okay. And here's our beginner version. All right. So we are going to do 10 chair sits. All right. Then we're going to do 10 countertop slash wall push-ups. Okay. Then we are going to bike or elliptical for a minute 30. Now, the reason why I didn't set like a, like on machines, you have calories or something along those lines. I really wanted to make sure that people are getting the same feel. And I know how I'm going to advance this workout and make it a little bit more challenging. So I feel like a minute and a half on a bike or elliptical going as hard as you can for your fitness level would be a great place to start. Okay. So what's our intermediate version of this workout? What are we going to do to make this slightly harder? Okay. Well, we're going to do 15 air squats. So now you're removing that bench or chair. We're doing a few more reps because I feel like somebody that can do air squats with good form could probably do 15 of those about as fast as a person brand new to fitness can do 10 chair sets. And then we're going to do 15 push-ups or knee push-ups, right? So either version would be acceptable in this case. Um, both are going to consider these intermediate. You're going through a full range of motion. But now we're going all the way down to the ground, right? And now we're going to run 400 meters or we use any sort of cardio machine, that bike or that elliptical for a minute 30, but you're going as hard as you can for your own fitness level, okay? Guys are getting, getting the pattern here, right? And now we've got our advanced version. So now we're just getting a little bit harder. Now we're going to do 15 goblet squats. So that's taking a dumbbell or a kettlebell holding it in that front rack position, like the kettlebell or dumbbell straight up and down, keeping it close to the body. So now we're doing what we call a goblet squat and we're gonna prescribe 50 pounds for guys, 35 pounds for ladies. And then you can always scale that weight up or down, right? This is a typical weight that we'd use here in our gym. And then we're gonna do 15 dumbbell bench presses. Now you've got two dumbbells. We're gonna use that same weight, 50 or 35. You're hanging on to one dumbbell. Now we're bench pressing two dumbbells. All right. And then once again, we're going to go right into, I'm going to bump this workout down onto the next page so we can stay together here. Running 400 meters or a minute 30 as hard as you can on any cardio machine. Okay. So now once again, I figured that I could do 15 goblet squats with a 50 pound dumbbell and then grab both dumbbells and do 15 bench press at 50 pounds, about the same amount of time, maybe a little bit longer, but really close to a person um, that's brand new to fitness doing those chair sits and things. Now we could also just change this and say, man, 15 reps is a lot. I'd love to do this version. What if we just do 10? Okay, cool. So now the beginner, the intermediate and the advanced all got the same stimulus or feel for the workout, right? But now we're gonna have an elite version. And this is gonna be something maybe like CrossFit games level is gonna do. They're going to do 10 back squats with a barbell, or they could do front squats. And let's say that that weight is going to be 135 pounds for guys, 95 pounds for ladies. They're going to do 10, maybe they're going to do this, the same dumbbell bench, or maybe they're going to do barbell bench, right? And maybe they're going to use like 75% of their body weight, right? So if somebody weighs 200 pounds, they might be bench pressing 150 pounds, right? To give you an idea there. And then they're gonna run 400 meters and maybe they're even gonna do it with a vest because now we're really gonna make it hard. So when I look at this workout and I know about how long this should take, I figure that everybody's gonna be running or riding that bike or the elliptical for about a minute and a half. Um, you know, I know some people might be able to run 400 meters faster than that, but when you mix in all the other stuff over the course of the workout, 25 minutes, I think a minute and a half is a reasonable estimate. So if you're brand new, you might be pedaling your bike nice and easy, but you're going to work for a minute and a half. So we get the same feel for the workout. And I figure the other two movements, the squats and the push-ups, should probably take about a minute and a half. So we're looking at three minutes per round, right? And we're working for 25 minutes. So this would equate to roughly eight rounds of the workout, right? So you might get through eight and a half, you might finish six or seven, but you're roughly in that six to eight round window. That's how I look at programming workouts, knowing the stimulus 
or the feel that we want to get. Now, it makes this a lot of fun is I look at that and let's say we did all body weight movements, right? 25 minute AMRAP, all body weight movements. Well, then I might program this workout the next week, could do the same thing, but use all weighted movements. And maybe we're not going to do it for time, but we're going to do five rounds focusing on quality range of motion, quality reps, and moving some heavier weight. Way to do a different variation of really the same movement. Always keep the body guessing, right? Or the same workouts and always, always keep the body guessing. So I hope that lends some insight, right? Kind of the thought process. So to recap real quick, um, we're going to pick three movements. So pick any three movements you like. And you can always reach out to me. I'll help you out with this. But pick an advanced, an intermediate, and then the ultimate beginner version with keeping in mind a range of motion and trying to get the same stimulus or feel for anything we're doing. Then we need to decide, do we want to prioritize getting a certain amount of work done? Like we're going to go through it five times, no matter how long it takes, or time. I want it for 10 minutes or 15 or 20. When we're new to fitness and you haven't been around the programming game, running a gym and things, running the clients as long as I have, I think a way to do this is always prioritizing time. That way, like you and your kids, you and your husband or wife, or you and some friends could always work out for the same amount of time together, that 20, 25, 30 minutes. Remember, always warm up first. So then we just kind of lay these out. What are different variations of each movement? My squats, my push-ups, and my running, how to make them super hard and how to make them easy enough so that even the beginner to fitness can do them. Let's set how long we want to work. And now we're going to take the beginner movement, the easiest one from each of those categories, assign a number of repetitions to it. And then we're going to take the intermediate, assign a number of repetitions, and then advanced. And then we even add elite that's like the heaviest weighted version. Keeping in mind that no matter which version you choose, these four versions, right, that anybody of any fitness level could do these together and get about the same amount of work done. That's how we create quality workouts for anybody to be able to do, right? So if this helped, guys, um, it was a lot of fun being here with you this morning. If you need anything, feel free to reach out to me, trevor at lifebasedsolutions.com or check out our website at lifebasedsolutions.com. Feel free to drop comments when you see this post as well. I'll be back next week. You guys are awesome. Thanks for having me this morning.